Uh, so I discontinued work on my um, ham radio that, that I'm building here at home um, because I simply didn't have the test equipment I needed to figure out what was going on with my radio and why it wasn't working uh, during my preliminary tests. So I was considering buying one of these Rigel 50 megahertz. That's the it's a DS1054Z, I think it's called. Yeah, I was considering um, purchasing one of these, and I, I probably still will eventually, but for, I, I'm, I'm cheap, so I don't really want to spend the money. Um, but I was, uh, I think, I don't remember where I originally read about the idea, but the idea is basically to use a noise generator as sort of a, a noise generator in combination with a spectrum analyzer as a, as a poor man's network analyzer. But obviously I don't have a spectrum analyzer either, but you can use um, a SDR. And I have an RTL SDR, which I've got um, here. And uh, I've been using in previous videos for doing some some testing and uh, using kind of as a spectrum analyzer. So um, I looked into building what's called a noise generator. Basically, a noise generator generates broadband noise across all frequencies. So if you pass that broadband noise through a filter or if through a directional coupler into an antenna, you can actually get a bit of a frequency response out. Um, and there's some videos online, some really good videos online that I, I referenced uh, on YouTube. I, I don't remember who put them out um, and planted the idea originally. But I looked up some designs for a noise generator. Basically, it's a, a noise a noise source, but uh, rather than, than having just a, a diode that's reverse biased to generate noise, you also have an amplification stage on, on the end of it so that you get high, high amounts of noise. So your excess noise ratio is is in greatly in excess of you know 15 dB or whatever you would normally get. Uh, so here's one design I looked at. It's a Zener diode that's reverse biased and then amplified to the output. But I don't have a Zener diode on hand, and I wanted to just build something quickly. Otherwise, I'd just lose momentum again on this project. So I didn't actually pursue this design, and instead, I uh, I did I, I used this design here. This is from kb8ojh.net, um, and here's the schematic, <clears throat> if it loads, uh, I don't see it. Anyway, it's, it's basically a 3904 with a floating collector, um, and then the gate is tied to another 3904 um, to, to, to provide amplification, and this basically goes into Zener breakdown because you're pushing um, you've got revert, you're re reverse biasing your emitter base junction, I guess you could call it, um, to produce the, the noise and then it's being amplified by uh, this transistor here and that goes to your output. So, um, so, I, so I built one of those and I tested it out. So here's the um, noise generator I uh, built. Um, I just built it on some, some single-sided uh, perf board and used an SMA connector for the RF output um, and then I connected to a 12 volt source through that uh, the battery clip there and then here's the <clears throat> then here's the uh, noise generator powered up uh, it generates normally I have a noise floor about 60 dB and you can see here I'm at about 20 so I'm getting like 40 dB of noise at least um, however you can see that there it's not um, it's not the same across frequency. It varies with frequency, um, which isn't exactly um, desirable, but I mean, for such a simple noise generator, I don't expect much better performance, but it actually ends up being adequate for my purposes here. You can see, unfortunately, that I'm building a, a 40 meter uh, transceiver, and this is actually where I get the least noise, so testing, <coughs> testing devices in this frequency range is going to be harder than in other frequency ranges. If we keep going here, we're up at about you know, 10 megahertz, and we get very low noise here, about minus 35 dB. Um, up here in the 20 meter band, we also have very low noise, um, but I mean, it's still, it's still at least 25 dB of, of noise, so it's still going to be adequate. I don't really know what the why there's a lull in the noise there, but you can see it picks up here as we get up in about 20 megahertz. Um, now we're getting quite a bit, uh, minus 20, so that's uh, 40 dB of, of gain um, above the noise floor. 
You get a few spikes there. Um, some sort of those are actually uh, uh, when I disconnected the noise source later. I realized that those are frequencies that that kind of come through even with the noise source switched off. So I, I I'm assuming that's coming from like the computer nearby or other interference. And I don't have a very well shielded environment, so it's definitely not optimal. Um, but I can't really explain that. I'm not going to pretend I actually understand what's going on there. So yeah, decent amount of noise. And then it drops off again up around 40 megahertz here. Uh, drops to almost nothing. Uh, I don't plan to do a lot of building in this region, but I guess if I do, I can uh, either buy a noise source. But as you can see, it actually picks up again here. Uh, I guess this would be 6 meter band. So it'll still be usable even up here. I don't plan to build a lot more at home above 50 megahertz though. So here's the schematic for my bandpass filter. I simulated it in uh, LT Spice. That's a great free download that I've been using. Um, it uses a couple shunt capacitors, a couple shunt inductors, a shunt, or rather a series inductor and a, a series capacitor, as you can see. I don't have any ferret, or I didn't have any toroids on hand, so I designed some hair core inductors using uh, hamwaves.com. It's a, the best um, inductance calculator I've found around. So I built my first uh, bandpass filter using um, using this calculator, and I just wound some air core inductors. And I'll I'll show you the uh, the frequency response I got from my uh, first filter that I built. Um, however, since since building this first filter, I actually got some toroids in some FT thirty seven dash or yeah FT thirty seven dash twos, and so I built up uh, built up um, another fil bandpass filter with some some toroids instead of uh, some air core inductors. Here's uh, the bandpass filter. You can see I've got a couple smaller air core inductors than a large air core inductor. The large one is the, the series inductor and then the smaller ones are the, the shunt shunt inductors. And uh, so I, I tested this using the, uh, the, the the noise generator combined with the, the SDR um, and uh, I'll show you that that uh, frequency response now. All right here we are in SDR sharp. There are other better software for, for use as a spectrum analyzer but I don't I can't make them run on Windows, at least I haven't been able to figure out how to do it. And here we've got the noise generator powered up and it's going through my bandpass filter. You can see we don't really see a filter response here. This is pretty a flat frequency response. Uh, so we're going to scroll scroll down here in frequency and uh, there we go. At our, on our 60 meter ham band, uh, we've got uh, we've, there, our filters centered right there. Uh, in the red, you can see it at its peaks at about minus 20, minus 15 dB, uh, and then falls off uh, at lower and higher frequencies. That's 5.4 megahertz. So uh, clearly, we uh, we missed the mark a little bit. Um, the way I had to build these air core inductors, though, I can't actually just adjust this um, bandpass filter easily. I actually used super glue to keep the windings in place because otherwise they would have just fallen off of the, the plastic dowel that I used for, for winding these uh, these inductors. Yeah, I'm just scrolling up and down here to check the fall off. Uh, and you can see we, we get nice fall off um, above and below our frequency of interest. All right, here's comparing my first inductor to my, or my toroid inductor to my air core inductor. These are, those are the five microhenry inductors. Uh, the, the toroid is an FT37-2 with 30 turns. My shunt inductors are again FT37-2s 30, uh, with uh, nine turns on them for a half a microhenry of inductance. And here's the resulting uh, bandpass filter. Uh, on the board with the, the three inductors now. Um, and here's the test results. All right, back into SDR Sharp here. Uh, this is before I've turned on the noise generator. Oh, and there we're connected. And we've got, uh, oh, there's a bit, there's that intermittent connection. I've got. But you can see now we're at uh, minus 35 dBm. 
or db rather, uh, which is about where I found uh, I saw the noise when I was checking it before insertion of the uh, filter. You can see that the the peak is up at about 7.6 or yeah about 7.6 megahertz, and we're already having a bit of roll off um, across our our 40 meter band. So I was trying to figure out what I could do to um, retune the, uh, the the filter, and what I ended up doing is actually just uh, squeezing the windings. So the windings sat fairly loosely around the toroid. I, I can't wind them very tightly. I know you're supposed to, but here you can see the the, the, the peak, the, the center frequency for my filter um, bouncing up and down in frequency. And basically, I'm just compressing those windings; they're closer together. Um, which creates a higher inductance. So when you have looser windings, you have lower inductance. So I'm just increasing the inductance of my 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 large, the one with 30 turns, uh, that large inductor. Um, and so you know I'm playing around with the windings here, and you can see I can get it nice and centered over the 40 meter band. Um, it's a bit of trial and error. I don't know how to secure these windings. They don't move around after this. Um, I would rather not have to check this filter after I've finished assembling the radio. Um, maybe it just means I haven't wound the windings tightly enough, but I, I, you know, I, I did the best I could with my hands winding them. So if there's any good advice on how to um, keep these windings fixed where they are, um, that would be great. I was, I was a little bit alarmed at how much difference playing with those windings made um, in terms of the, the frequency of my, my bandpass filter. So One more thing before I leave, I wanted to point out this excellent resource I used for actually calculating how many windings I needed on my inductors for the bandpass filter. Uh, so it's um, toroids.info. Um, I have to apologize, I thought I was working with a 37-2, but it's a 68-2, I can tell now from the video. Anyway, so you can see here you can punch in the number of windings, or you can either you can punch in the amount of inductance you need, and then uh, find out how many turns you need, and then punch in a whole number for the number of turns. And then, for example, here I needed uh, half a microhenry, but I ended up just using nine turns, which got me 0.46 microhenries, but close enough. And then I would just punch that into LT Spice to to correct for for the the difference. Well, that's all I've got for this installment. So um, I'll. Try and get something put together again soon, um, but no promises. Life is busy. Thanks for watching. Bye.